Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Recently, an art professor was let go from her position after showing images of the Prophet Muhammad. Why do Muslims have a problem with images of the Prophet Muhammad? Is this prohibited in the Quran or in the Hadith or any part of Islamic tradition? With me is Dr. Shabir. Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. Now, I'm sure you've heard about this furor over this art professor who was let go from her position, Dr. Shabir. Um, there's been a lot of commentary from other professors, from you know university administration, from other students, from civil rights organizations. What are your thoughts on this issue? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's sad to see that it's come to this, but uh, let, let, let's take it apart one one issue at a time. So uh, one is the um, the traditional um, prohibition of uh, producing images of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him at least within Sunni understandings of, of Islam. Um, so as Muslims, we're not going to make uh, images of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We're not going to portray those images. And uh, if we see other people doing that, we may feel some abhorrence towards that because we know that's, that's contrary to our tradition. The second issue is uh, the freedom of speech and freedom of expression that uh, is uh, largely um, a, a policy that is adopted in, in modern uh, um, developed nations. Uh, many nations still have uh, laws against um, th that will curb and, and limit the freedom of expression in certain respects. For example, you cannot make anti-Semitic statements. Um, but, but still, there, there is a large presupposition that uh, you can criticize the religion, especially in an academic circle and in an academic manner. And, uh, and that should not, uh, you know, be considered to be harmful to anyone. It's just uh, that's how academia proceeds. And even if somebody was doing it for a, an offensive reason, uh, they, uh, in, in many parts of the world, it is understood to be a fundamental right of people uh, to say what they want. If it offends other people, that's, you know, in, um, I, I can't speak as a legal expert here, but but this is a general presupposition. Uh, that's the idea we get. That uh, if you, if you're offended, that's too bad for you. But uh, you know that that's somebody else's right to to express themselves. Uh, so within within an academic situation, um, we we understand that you know books have been written, images like this have been shown in in textbooks dealing with the history of Islam and and so on. It's not uncommon to find images like this. One might go into a book of world religions and uh, in, in, uh, uh, in the section dealing with Islam, you might find exactly this image that was said to be shown uh, in this university setting. Um, so, so there are all of these issues that, that are bound together mm -hmm. and, and we need to you know, separate them uh, in order to make sense of the whole thing. So, and the final and, point, Dr. Shabir, is that the, the image itself is not an offensive one in the sense that it's, it's not depicting the Prophet Muhammad in a negative way. Right. You know, it is showing his face. Right. Which some Muslims might object to. But it's not um, showing him in a way that kind of, you know, questions his moral worth in some way or makes him look ugly or anything like that. Right. Yes. Yes. And in fact, it is now, um, it, as it turns out, the, the, this image was um, or if there were two images, they, they were uh, said to be uh, produced by Muslims mm -hmm. uh, for devotional purposes. They, yes. they thought that this is a way of expressing our love and adherence to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's, it's meant to to show him as a respect. Uh, person. Mm -hmm. And in the art world, they're seen as masterpieces. Yes, yes. So uh, with all of this in mind, uh, uh, we, we should say that as Muslims, uh, we, we do not re react to things in this way to, uh, you know, cause the, uh, a person to lose his or her job over this or something like this. There they should be dialogue. And it is uh, encouraging in a way that uh, the, the university took the stern measure um, because it, at, at least from the Muslim point of view, it shows that they are ready to uh, defend Muslim sensibilities. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, Muslims should think very carefully, is this how we want to promote ourselves? Is this uh, the depiction that we want of ourselves? Mm -hmm. that, um, you know, somebody says something or does something that we find offensive, and the next thing is that that person loses his or her job over it. 
Um, and uh, looking more closely at the university setting, one would uh, ask that universities in situations like this have more open dialogue with uh, their uh, professors uh, to look at remedial solutions. It's, you know, firing the person uh, seems to be a very drastic move. Yes, and, and she was a lecturer too, so her, her position was already precarious, right? She's not getting paid very much. And, you know, it's not like she has a, uh, a, a position that is, is kind of like um, her job is guaranteed, right? You know, every term. She, she has to reapply for a position, Yes, right? yes. And so, so the university has an easy way out of saying, okay, so her period of uh, employment ended and uh, we're just not renewing. Mm -hmm. And she did put those, like she did sh say in her syllabus that she's going to show these images of different religious um, traditions, right? And that she's going to do it to show the diversity, right? Within the, re re the religious traditions and within the depictions that they have. Yes, yeah. and then she made a firmer, um, a, a further announcement that uh, you know she will be showing these images. So anyone who uh, would like to excuse themselves from the class w would have the option to, of doing of doing so before the images are shown. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess uh, a student sitting there doesn't really know what to expect yeah. and doesn't realize that she's going to be offended until uh, she sees the images themselves, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you know something strikes a chord. And, and she gets offended and, and she decides that this is what she needs to do. Now, um, the, the CARE, the, the CAIR Council, of, Council American of American Islamic Relations. American Islamic Relations, you got that right. So the, the head of CARE, uh, Nihad Awad, has actually put out a statement, uh, a very carefully drafted statement. That itself is a masterpiece, covering all <laughs> ground in, in this matter, mm -hmm. um, saying that on the one hand, uh, we... Um, do not uh, encourage such depictions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And uh, they said, we would politely discourage others uh, from, uh, you know, mm -hmm. producing such uh, depictions. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you know, uh, CARE is uh, calling on the university uh, to review this matter and to, um, it, it's obvious from that declaration that uh, CARE is not happy with this outcome that the professor is fired. And of course, it doesn't even end there. Now there is even a call, uh, apparently, for the resignation of the um, president of the university. President of, the university. <laughs> of course, that call is coming from the other direction, uh, not, for, not from Muslims. So, Dr. Shibur, can you speak about the Islamic tradition? What exactly does it say about depicting the Prophet Muhammad? Yeah, I, I think it's good that we're having this discussion because uh, if, uh, you know, if, if the student uh, who uh, first raised this complaint had checked with people like the Council of uh, American Islamic Relations and, and had checked with uh, Muslim scholars, maybe uh, she would have been shown a different way of dealing with this situation. So uh, the different way comes out af as we look at the um, details of, of this, you know, uh, where does this prohibition come from and how seriously uh, are we to take this in our present circumstances. So uh, first, as I've already uh, outlined, Safiya, there is a difference between our approach as Muslims and what we might expect of non-Muslims. It, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. uh, like a, a, we, we have certain rules that we're to observe because we are religious be believers and faithful followers, but we cannot expect that the other people are going to adhere to our rules. Uh, I mean, laws of the land, this is expected of everyone, but laws of our religion, we cannot expect of non-religionists or, or other than our co-religionists. And even our co-religionists, we cannot impose on them to follow because they might have a different interpretation and so on. So uh, the, uh, getting back to your question more squarely, the Quran does not actually say anything about depicting images, mm -hmm. um, but at least not in a negative way. I'll come to a positive depiction in a moment. Um, the, uh, and and we, we should contrast this with what is known from uh, the Bible. In the book of Deuteronomy, um, at chapter 5, you're, you're not only, as part of the Ten Commandments, you're, you're not only um, not allowed to bow down and worship images, but you're not allowed to produce images in the first place. And, and not only images of God are you prohibited from making, but anything that, you know, crawls on the, uh, on the ground or walks on the ground or flies in the air or anything like this. You're not to make any graven images whatsoever. But the Quran has nothing like this. On, on the contrary, in the story of Solomon, uh, who is known as King Solomon in the Bible, Prophet Sulaiman to Muslims, 
uh, it, it, it is shown that he had the jinn creatures working for him and they were carving images for him. Mm -hmm. uh, so if uh, images were so at the core uh, to be haram or prohibited, uh, then you might expect a different uh, imagery regarding Solomon and his activities. Uh, so, so in the Quran, on the, on the, you know, to, to summarize, there is nothing that clearly says that you cannot draw images. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in the Hadith, however, there are um, indictments for drawing images. And uh, the reasoning is not so very clear. Uh, a common reasoning known to many Muslims is that if you draw an image, let's say of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, somebody may put it up, up on a wall, another generation comes later on and they see that and they start adoring it, garland, garlanding it, and eventually uh, doing more and more acts of devotion towards it. And then of course, lo and behold, we've fallen as a community into shirk or associating partners with God. We don't wanna do that. Uh, but uh, it, uh, these images have been around and the uh, Islamic insistence on Tawhid is so strong that it's hard to imagine that Muslims are going to go that route now. Uh, so even if it meant something at one time, it's not such a stringent uh, um, issue in our present times. And uh, on the other hand, there are hadiths which uh, say that if somebody draws images, then God will challenge them to put a soul into those images on the day of judgment, and they won't be able to do that, and thus they will be humiliated uh, before all and sundry. Uh, but it's, it's hard to imagine that somebody who is drawing an image uh, intends to compete with God, because that's, that's the basis of this uh, hadith um, and, and its prohibition against drawing images. Uh, so in, in, in sum, I don't see that we need to be very strict about this issue in our present times. And uh, if, if somebody is offended by what is uh, being uh, shown out there, then the better way to deal with it is not to react emotionally, but to seek the guidance of Muslim leaders, both um, uh, those who are schooled in the scholarly tradition of the Islamic faith, and also to seek the advice of legal experts who are uh, defending the Muslim community against uh, things like Islamophobia. Uh, such uh, experts that are found with organizations uh, including the Canadian, the, the Council of American uh, Islamic Relations. And in Canada, we have the National Council of Canadian Muslims. Exactly. Thank you for that, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. Support us today and help us share the message of Islam with people across the globe. Thank you, and may God bless you and your loved ones with the very best always. <laughs>